Hi, this is Martin, and um, I'm going to show you a little uh, demonstration of how to configure a CAN sensor for both lighting control and to control the HVAC in a room. I've already uh, loaded the items into iCANSoft and I've already created some areas here. One thing we have got here is, is that the numbering isn't uh, ideal. We need to maybe tidy this up to make it easier to actually see. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to renumber my sensor here. Now I, there's various places I can actually do this, but I'm going to do it here. I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to right hand mouse. I'm going to do renumber device and I'm going to make it uh, 26. So I just over type the blue tab. Again over type the blue with another number 2 and then just press the enter. I, if you want to use your mouse, so be it. And now it's 26.2. So let's just see how I've actually got this set up at the moment. We, we can imagine that we've actually got a room, a uh, small meeting room. We've got some channels on a dimmer uh, in the area that it's controlling. So let's just look at how the panel's configured. Okay, so double click on here. Okay, look at the buttons. Okay, here we've got four scenes off, raise and lower. One little mistake here, let's change this to be area 8. All right, easy enough to do. Click on apply. The sensor is, we've already found it, we've located it, maybe using our infrared tool uh, or we've just known how there's only a small system, we know we've only got one sensor. Whichever way, we need to actually identify the sensor in each room. So here we go. Um, we're going to look at the way this is actually configured. So area 8 is our meeting room. We double click on here. Now the, the sensor is configured. It has three items in it. It has an infrared receiver, it has a light sensor and it also has a movement sensor. Now we're not going to worry about the light sensor at the moment. We're just going to look at the movement sensor and the infrared. The infrared is configured in iCANSoft and if we just click on the sensor and we actually go to the infrared here, it's got the red around it to identify that it, this is the one we're looking at. So here's an image of the hand controller that we currently actually use with the names of the buttons. Now assuming that we're only wanting to replicate the buttons in the room, then we've just got off one, two, three, four, increment and decrement. Exactly the same as what's on the control panel. Noting that the infrared hand controller is completely independent of the buttons on the wall, so I could configure this to do something else. Wouldn't normally actually do that. And it might be that we don't want to actually use the infrared at all, so in which case then we just configure all of these inputs to no action exactly as the ones after the lower are actually configured. Okay. And that's easy enough to do. I can just click on here, hold down the shift key go to here and then just drop down and do no action. I'm not actually going to do that. I'm going to leave them as they are. Okay. So if I just do cancel, we haven't changed anything. Right. The PIR and the light sensor are not configured in iCANSoft. So at the moment we've actually got control of the room from the uh, control panel. Here we go. I'm just pressing the buttons on the control panel and we can see scenes being selected, the increment and the decrement and if I hold my finger on the increment and the decrement the lights will go up and down. I'm not going to cover uh, configuring scenes in here. Right, let's move on to the sensor. First let's just look at what I've configured here. I've actually got my meeting room lighting scenes in area 8 and the HVAC we're going to use area 51 now, in order to do this, when we move in the space, it's going to send a scene select message, area 51, scene 1. So we need to add this scene into here. So we're just going to do in here, and we're going to add a scene, and we're going to, we can give it a name if we want. HVAC on. Okay. We don't need any channels. We're just purely using this as a message that we can actually then send on to the BMS system. 
the other areas I've just configured some other areas which are yeah, like around the room okay so let's move on now to actually do the um, configuration of the sensor so we click on this icon at the top here which opens this plug-in tool right. and then we go on to the daylight and movement and daylight wizard and here we've actually got our wizard here I'll just make it a little bit bigger notice how the areas have all come into uh, our system here and this is the sensor we're actually looking at so the first thing to do is we've only got one sensor simply we're going to actually take the sensor and we're going to move it into the meeting room Right, so we just pick it, we just click on here, hold down the left hand mouse button and drag it across to the meeting room. Okay, let go. It will automatically falls into group one. I'm not going to cover group two and three, just assume everything goes into group one. If you don't specify where it's actually going to go, it's always going to land up in group one. Okay, we now need an engine. The engine is what deals with making the lights turn on when it sees movement and all the other things which the movement sensor actually has to do to to control the lights all the timing and everything like that so again we just need one engine per area and it means that you have one engine per area but you can have up to 32 sensors in a in in an area so you'd actually get a list of 32 sensors going down here in group 1 and they'd all be given an in, in, in individual number automatically by the uh, program here so we just grab hold of the engine and we move it over into group into area 8 okay so let's look at what we've actually got here let's make this slightly narrower and wider here and go back this way now automatically the act of actually what we've just done will set up our sensor to work as shown here so on movement with a fade time of 100 milliseconds that for a sensor in group one you'll get scene one selected uh, so ignore group two and group three at the moment because we don't need those now then the no movement timeouts currently fifth set at 15 minutes that means that when I leave the room after the last time the sensor actually sees me the lights will remain on for 15 minutes and then after that period which is called the no movement period okay we will get an off command with a fade time of 30 seconds the escape delay at the bottom allows us to actually get out of the room in the event of a control panel actually being located in the room so if I'm in the room and I want to leave and turn the lights out if I push the off button the sensor will remain inactive for 10 seconds for me to get out of the room otherwise as soon as I push the off button the lights will come straight back on again you can make this time delay longer or shorter if the control panel is outside of the room then it's not really a big issue so this is what will happen as standard so you don't need to do anything more so if if I was happy with all of that setting up all I have to do is just click on the apply changes okay. and I get a little window up here and I can see all the messages actually being sent to the sensor okay that's done okay so if we wanted to actually see this actually working I've got a little sensor on the floor here I'm just going to move in front of it okay so where I moved okay it picked me up here here's the movement here's the message sent out to turn the lights on scene one here's another important message which is the occupancy message and this now will remain on for 15 minutes now I don't want to wait 15 minutes so in order to actually test this I'm going to close down this window I can close down the monitor window by clicking on here right. and if I click on movement here I can go in and I can actually change my no movement time out the shortest time is 15 seconds so I just type in 15 seconds apply changes just click here apply changes 
always important to click on the apply changes. Right. So let's do this again. I'll clear this window. You can clear the window here. Bit of movement. Okay. So here's our movement detection here and you can see there's the movement, there's the scene message to turn the lights on, here's the occupancy message, the no movement message means that we've stopped moving in the space, 15 seconds later, this is in milli milliseconds here, 14,658 milliseconds, approximately by the time we've added on this 440 here, 15 seconds and the lights have actually turned off. Very simple, nothing else you actually need to do. So let's look at uh, how we uh, connect in the HVAC. So now we go to here and do we want to enable the HVAC? Yes, we want to enable the HVAC. Now it will automatically have put in area 1. We don't want area 1. We go down here and we choose the area that we actually want to use. So we're going to use let me just move this, uh, you might not see this, it's area 51 here and it's going to do occupancy start, scene 1, occupancy end, scene 0 again click on apply the changes, notice the little asterisk over here indicates that there's been changes made and haven't been uploaded so we can click on apply changes, you can also go to here and do right device to network will do exactly the same thing. Okay, so let's just move this up here so we're still in the window. So not only have we actually got movement here, we've got the daylight disabled, we've actually got here the HVAC, area 51, room 1, HVAC, occupancy start is scene 1, occupancy end scene 0. So let's see this working. Again, we'll just put up our monitor window. We do a clear with the brush here. Right, there we go. So this time we actually get movement. Area 51, that's our HVAC message turning on. Area 8 is our scene 1 message to turn the lights on, followed by a no movement message, this effectively means that I haven't moved in front of the sensor anymore. Right. Again, that's approximately 15 seconds later. Here's our message, turn off the HVAC and 40 milliseconds, blink of an eye, is we can actually see the lights turn off here with their fade time of 30 seconds. Very simple. Okay, let's turn this off again. Now you can, let's just look at some other functions on here. We can look at what we call graphical editor here and we can see that the HVAC is enabled. Right, we're going to look at the real time feedback here. Now at the moment it's telling me that the uh, room one, the current scene is zero. Right, if I move in front of the sensor, uh, sorry, we need to move in front of the sensor we can now see it's actually uh, timing out. If I keep moving in front of the sensor the timer keeps updating. So a good way of actually seeing that it's actually working and we'll see when it gets to the end of the timeout period it turns off. If I stop moving So, current has gone back to scene zero. If I go back into iCanSoft, I can now save this file, save, I'll just save it to my desktop, HVAC example, save. Right, and if I close this down, I close this, and I open my icon soft again. Okay, quite sure about that. If 
file HVAC example. Here's all my information come back in. I'm connected onto the CAN. If I open my CAN sensor using the wizard, all the information is exactly as I had before. I can click on here. Now another thing you can actually do here is you click on here first, then you go onto here right hand mouse. Let me shorten this down to the right size. Sorry. If I click on here you can see the sensor underneath here. Right hand mouse movement test exactly the same as moving in the room so you don't actually need to go to the room to actually see uh, this functionality working okay, just wait the 15 seconds okay so there's our 15 seconds if we want to actually go back and uh, let's make all this bigger so we can see what's occurring let's get rid of this Meeting room, engine, movement, change my time back to 15 minutes, apply changes, if I just go to here, Oops. apply changes. So now my room is set for 15 minutes. So the time before the HVAC turns off will also be 15 minutes. So let's go and just reset this back to 15 seconds because we're going to use the control panel now to actually turn the lights on because the option is there to enable us to actually have manual functionality of the uh, uh, of the lighting. So I could go into the room and not turn the lights on. So all we're going to do here is we're going to go in and we're going to go to advanced mode here and we're just going to go into this one here this is the action that happens this action here happens when I move underneath the sensor and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to set this to no action click on apply changes and we're going here we clear this again move in front of the sensor piece of wire dangling in front of it now you can see here that we don't have any lighting control message but if I press the button on the lighting control panel the lights will turn on if I very still in the room again 15 seconds and the lights turn off here's the HVAC turning off and here's the lights turning off a few milliseconds apart Okay. so it turns off when there's no occupancy just because I'm moving in the space again right okay so again I can close this down here and do a save to my database Okay, I think that gives you a good explanation.